unveiling Lady Justice on reforming the justice system in Nigeria. Lady Justice, you most likely have seen her statue in front of a court of law one time or the other. In the event you haven't seen or you don't remember it, she's that lady with her face covered with a veil. Usually she's holding a scale of justice in one hand and a sword in the other hand. The history of this justice dates back to the Roman mythology. You know, justice was one of the virtues celebrated by Emperor Augustus. Since the 16th century, Lady Justice has often been depicted wearing a blindfold. The blindfold represents impartiality, the ideal that justice should be applied without regard to wealth, power, or other status. Let me repeat that. The ideal of the blindfold is that justice should be applied without regard to wealth, power, or other status. Justice is a word that has been, you know, seriously criticized, you know, in fact, can be described as a relative term because in, in itself, in some occasions, you know, justice is to one person, sometimes an end result of injustice to another. So in Nigeria, how, is just, how has justice fared? You know, what are the challenges of the justice system in Nigeria? What are the limitations and what steps need to be taken to make justice available and fair to all who are in search of it? A uh, little, you know, um, Definition. Merrill Webster dictionary defines justice as the process or result of using laws to fairly judge and punish crimes and criminals. Going by this definition, it is clear and apparent that justice is still, to a large extent, you know, a foreign concept on many of the issues that we're grappling with in Nigeria. As a matter of fact, on the Global Rule of Law Index, <laughs> Nigeria ranks 108 out of 128 countries, 108 out of 128 countries, and 22 out of 31 countries in the sub-Saharan African, you know, sub-Saharan African region. Again, let's talk about the rule of law. What's the rule of law? You know, the rule of law in plain terms implies that every person is subject to the law, including persons who are lawmakers, law enforcement officials, <laughs> and judges. In this sense, it stands in contrast to tyranny or oligarchy, where the rulers are held above the law. So now imagine again, the global ranking of Nigeria being 108 out of 128 simply means that Nigeria is you know, trending more towards a tyranny than you know, a country that is, respects the rule of law. Now, what are the issues responsible for this? Recent in-depth research carried out revealed eight major issues bedeviling the justice in Nigeria. The issues are one. The unforthcoming informants. I'm sure many of us have experienced that. Let's not even dive into that, you know. Number two, funding. Number three, corruption. Number four, training of investigating police officers. Number five, missing case files. Number six, delayed duplication of case files. Number seven, lack of forensic laboratories and insufficient number of trained forensic experts. And number eight, poor public records keeping. These are very obvious but very critical issues. And I advocate that the government should urgently look at these issues for a quick resolution with the aim of getting back our country into a more civilized society. Well, you, have, you asked a question, and I think I should, we should even start with that. That, in your view, how has uh, the justice system fared? Mm. I think the justice system has been unjust. <laughs> <laughs> Point blank. But, you know, the justice system has been. It's. it's People don't have confidence in the system. And that is a big scare. Because yeah. no matter what you say, no matter what it's like, your appearance matters. At times, you judge a book by the cover. That's one of the first experiences you have. No matter what you say or do, it's, it matters a lot. The Nigeria's justice system, my biggest problem with the justice system is not just that you, the fact that you might not get justice is the process of the justice. And why do I say not the fact that I might not get justice? I've seen people who are ordinary people go to court with their facts and they've won cases that people have wondered, wow, so you could do this. There was a time I went to get passport for my son and when I got there, the man, I think I asked my wife to go, so I left her or something. And the person there looked at me and said, wow, Okay, both of you are here, say yes. Say, why are you asking? And he told me, he said, last year, there was a case. Somebody sued immigration and won. Mm. Why? 
they had a family issue. The wife picked the kids, got passport for them, and took them out of Nigeria, mm -hmm. relocated. And the man wondering that, how did my kids travel abroad? They don't have a passport. Mm. Realized that she did a passport for them without his consent. So he took immigration. And which is not it's supposed know, to be both parents, parents, yeah. both parents exactly. consent. In the normal legal process. Exactly. And he took the, the people wow. to the immigration to court. Of course, prolonged. Mm. But he won. So at that point, immigration, that was when they were very harsh and said, no, you must come, both parties must come or sign and blah, blah, blah. What am I saying? I'm sure that has happened to so many people. And out of fear that I can't get justice, they haven't tried it. Exactly. And that's why I use the idea that when it doesn't look convincing, when you, you don't see, you're not able to have confidence in the system, then you let so many things go. And that is bad for our system. And, but like I said, the biggest scare for me is the fact that you start a process and I think on this program, I, I spoke about the injustice of Nigeria's justice system <laughs> some time ago, where I said, listen, we all talk about the influence of the executive. That's even a lesser devil to what happens in the justice, justice system. Justice, yeah. Because, listen, I, to, I spoke about this, um, the kidnapper, uh, what's his name again? Um, Im, uh, is it Ima or what's his name? Evans. The one that, Evans. Evans. Yeah, yeah, that was arrested. I said, okay, when this guy was arrested, so many talks came about the, the, the crime he committed. People came, all the people he had uh, kidnapped came out and stuff. They were ready to testify. The case was solid. Within that time, um, Ipeba was charged to court, was accused of collecting bribe for fixing a match. He was charged. He lost the case. He appealed the case. I think he had the sentence reduced. Between that time, George, uh, I said George, Mayweather, George Floyd, yeah. his case came up. He went to court and came back. Between that time and now, uh, Bill Cosby was sentenced. The thing was tried. The sentence was reviewed. All this has happened. Yet, we are still in courts over Evans's case. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that has nothing to do with executive power or influence. This is just the process of the courts. So all the processes of our courts, people's non challenge the person who has to carry the file like we hear and says you have to pay me this or this is missing and that is missing and that alone causes problem because we have fine judges who criminals are scared to get into their chamber, their courts. They know that mm. when they get into their courts, mm. they've lost. We have so many fine judges, yet the system prevents and just causes a back and forth. And again, the way our police or our security agencies build cases makes a mockery of our justice system. Because some cases you go and you see in court and you're like, there is no, nothing in this that you can use in winning a case. So a lot of things, those things, if you're able to deal with this, then we'll be left with the executive arm of issues. And that will be amongst the big men. But for us as the average person, you can go to court and know that you have justice when you're fighting one man. They even, when you see average people on the street, they don't even have the confidence in going to court. Even an average magistrate court, they would not attempt it because they feel you wouldn't get it. it. Even the way the officers there will speak to you, the composure of the magistrate, everything just puts you off. And these are the challenges you are faced with. Mm. Well, this is a very serious issue. Mm. But I will see this first. Ubi Josi Bi Remendium. I guess that's what you want to say, right? Where there is justice, uh, Mr. Tolu? Who be just EB remedium, hmm. right? Please, we're not in politics. I don't know about that. No, no, it's, uh, it's, 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 she's describing. <laughs> some heavy you, you are describing you, the uh, yeah, the you, woman, the woman that, that is carrying the uh, um, the balance. Good to me. Yeah, the woman carrying the balance, and then the sword. Yeah. If you are found wanting, she cuts you. She's blindfolded because she's impartial. Even if it's a child, mm. she will still cut her child. If, mm. if the child is found wanting. So that's why they say when there is justice, there is remedy, there is hope. It will be just be remedium. Mm. That's what is. So government exactly. should be of laws rather than of men. We watch movies, Nigerian movies, and I want to be specific, how justice has been carried out in a matter of weeks. But in reality, is it so? Mm. Is, it, is it supposed to be like that? Mm. You, go, you get to court a case that will take a year or a six months yeah. will be lingering for several years. Yeah. They keep back and forth. So people lose confidence in the system. Exactly. There should be a total overhaul of the system. That is one. Number two, I remember I had the opportunity of interacting with one law student while I was in university some years back. And then they were, she was telling me that uh, in Nigeria, our system is advisory. Our justice system is advisory. Mm. Why in the U.S. is investigative? I don't know that you've had something mm. like that. Mm. So can we, mm. can we have a clear distinction with the job of the police, another law enforcement agent, and that of the court. Because sometimes, I won't mention the name of some persons of interest that are currently facing charges now yeah. in high courts 
or Supreme Court in Abuja now, mm -hmm. and you hear cases like people are already manhandling them, government agencies, yeah. especially the DSS, we manhandle some of these people and almost treat them as though they were criminals, as if they don't have any rights on their own. Mm. And the, judge, the judges will be telling DSS, please do it this way, yet yeah, they will not listen. So like, everybody should know where your power stops and where your jurisdiction stops and respect it. Mm. And the other person or the other arm should do what they need to do. Yeah. Let's make the system work, enough of all this back and forth. Mm. <laughs> it's more like a ridicule now. Mm. You know, Tolu, um, I I'd like to just say that um, why, I mean, it's a very interesting point that you've brought up, right? Mm. Um, why this hasn't really worked, right? Why it hasn't worked is because, and, and again, the, the offshoot of this is people are raped and they can't talk about yeah. it. You know, people are, you know, unlawfully defrauded, battered, you know, assaulted, physically abused. They can't come up because someone tells you the, the rape um, I mean, I don't know if, if that is the right word to say, rapist or something. Someone that has raped somebody is moving free right. and making noise about it and being proud about it. In fact, moved on with his life and the rape victim, you know, is just there. So the process, like um, Kay said, is really so long, right? Again, bringing technology, how do we even really le leverage for the legal system to bring justice quicker, faster, accessible, mm -hmm. you know, easier, seamless to mm -hmm. the people. Anything that stresses us as Nigerians, we, we want are, to we're, avoid we're tired. it. We don't that's, want to no, because mm -hmm. talk, 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 and nothing happens. So, and that's why, I mean, that's even the history of, you know, let me just run away. There's no need really because and running away is easier than, than getting going justice. Through the whole process. <laughs> and you know, and you know, so, well, so, you know, and you know what even makes it difficult, which. We've all said, uh, I mean, alluded to it, but in a very silent way. But well, let's bring it out to the fore now is that the first line of justice is not the court, it is the security agency. Exactly. So, but whether, yeah, and when I say security, whether last or mile or last like, mile. The, the uniform men, mm -hmm. whether last mile, VIO, that's where you first experience justice before you can now, you know, elevate it to the uh, going to court or whatever. And once you get that wrong, no, it will be difficult to believe in. The court system. Well, if we have well, to talk for the country to be better, please mm. let's keep talking. That is it. That's yeah, what we we'll just keep to do. talking. Yeah. But okay. Tolu, we can go on and on. How do we bring this home? <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, so yeah, I mean, again, <laughs> we can go on and on with experiences and things like that. But I mean, I, I, I personally feel very strongly that new breed of people, um, whether we like it or not, they're going to emerge. People that, you know, respect the rule of law people that care about the rights of citizens. So we're talking about rights now, we're talking about the rule of law. And what is that? It's very simple. It just means that nobody's above the law. It's really as simple as that. True. You know, and the truth is there's nowhere in the world where they've gotten right 100%. We can see some level of progress. Mm. It looks like we have not even started. It looks like we're still, you know, we're still a fetus. We don't even understand where we are. We don't even know where we are, you know. So <laughs> Thanks, dude. at some point, you know, uh, yeah. people need to start making those... Um, um, those are taking those actions that take us to where we need to go. Okay. Please do stay with us. Elijah is next after the break. <laughs>